Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back to the Mommy Me Time Summit. Um, this this summit is all about helping you start off the new year, your health goals, your resolutions, and to just be successful. And I wanted to make sure we covered a topic that is near and dear to my heart and the work that I've done in the last um, seven or eight years with women, and that is around mindset, food freedom, and just really kind of getting some insight as to how we as moms can can have that freedom. So I thought, what better person to invite than Aunt Andrea? So Andrea, thank you so much for joining us. Brianna, thank you for having me here and welcome to everybody. Yeah, so I would love for you to just share more about you, share more about um, your journey, kind of what brought you to the work that you're doing now. Um, so yes, um, being a mom myself, my kids are now adults, so um, I had, of course, lots of stress, you know, I've always been working, uh, juggling, um, you know, the kids, the family, and all other things in between. And I came uh, to realize at one stage that I was not eating that healthy, right? Um, there was a bit more sugar than I actually thought I had, a bit here and there, and so on, and added up. And I realized because I was stressed all the time, I mean, stress is sort of my middle name, right? That I was often also stress eating, right? I was tired after a stressful day, or it was just like a pick up, pick me up or something like that. The typical thing. And I was often reaching for not necessarily the healthiest things. And until one day, um, I came across a really healthy way of eating for myself and literally everything changed because what I had developed is a couple of health issues and they kind of started slowly, right? I had weekly migraines and I always thought, okay, I have migraines, I'm migraine prone. I had, you know, I was tired all the time. I had a bit of weight issues. I had gut health issues. My gut was, you know, I felt all the time bloated. Um, I had uh, several hormone issues. I had fibroids that had to be removed three times. And I never put one and one together that actually all these issues were due to the unhealthy eating because when I started eating healthy everything improved and instead of having weekly migraines I have now three four times a year only um, I never had a growing fibroids so my hormones balance and even further on the, on the line you know I'm now in menopause um, I had almost no issues, you know, these menopausal symptoms or perimenopausal symptoms that most of my friends have. I had almost nothing of this. Mm -hmm. So I really realized and I put things together that when you eat the right food, and of course the lifestyle is important as well, um, then, you know, you can uh, positively influence your health. And this of course had a huge influence also on my overall life, right? I was happier. I was feeling less stressed. I mean, I still do 55,000 things all the time, but I can just deal with it better. I learned, of course, a lot of, you know, productivity hacks, habits and things like that. And I implement them. I'm constantly growing. So it's, it's you know, it's progress. And when I did that, um, as it is, you know, you come across a post or so, I uh, then started uh, nutrition and I become a nutrition coach and because I wanted to help other people and that's mm -hmm. what I do today. So I specialize in weight loss and emotional eating because I realized that most people, and I work mostly with women, not exclusively, but mostly, um, they really struggle with the emotional eating and that is often, you know, because of self-sabotage, limiting beliefs. So I work a lot on the mindset part actually of that mm -hmm. I love all of this I mean I love your story I love hearing it the first time but I just think there's some key things to even point out from there the idea of you were experiencing these health issues you were you were stressed your life you know and grabbing little snacks kind of mindlessly as we do just to kind of comfort or whatever and you didn't realize how all of that, how your nutrition was actually impacting those other issues so by focusing on your nutrition, you felt better, you felt more energetic, you had migraines every week now, once or twice a year. And it just shows the power of nutrition. It shows the power of intentionality and healthy habits that it's not just about, I got like to eat perfect, to eat perfect. Like we're doing this so we can feel our best and find mm. the energy and the freedom. And as moms, whether you're among of young kids or older kids, it's like just to be able to do the things that we fulfill us and bring us joy. Um, and so I love that. And, you know, and I love your focus because as someone who has struggled a lot with emotional eating and weight issues kind of because of that, I love how you really address the mindset first. And so let's talk a little bit about that because when people often think about emotional eating, whatever, they're going to go straight to habits. Now, I think, I think habits are a good place to start. 
But often if you're not trying to change, if you're not looking at the root of those beliefs or those thoughts, you could change your habits, but it, you can quickly easily revert, right? So talk to us a little bit about the the importance of mindset here, some of the things that you share with your clients. Okay, great uh, question. And you you put it all together. I believe very much in habits. Um, I believe in the root cause. And by the way, the root cause is, of course, the emotions, but also very often physical root cause. So all these areas I work uh, with my clients on, but the uh, mindset is super important. Very often, we we kind of give something a, more power over us than we should, right? So for example, when um, you are beating yourself up, right? Because you've gone in the cookie corners and you've eaten too much cookies, right? Because you felt stressed or overwhelmed or your kids got on your nerves or whatever it is, right? You will beat yourself up and you will say, oh no, I'm, I'm a failure. Again, I ate those cookies. I want to lose weight and I would not want to eat them and all that. But then what you do in this moment is actually you give the power to those not the cookies, obviously, but to the craving, right? How that makes you feel. What you could do instead is simply acknowledging it, right? Simply by saying, for example, okay, I ate those cookies. Like, you know, when you see a car passing by, I mean, you don't think twice about that car usually, unless maybe it's a Porsche or something like that. But, you know, you just say, oh, a car passed by, right? And you say, fine, the same thing when you, you know, jump into those cravings and you ate those cookies, just, okay, I ate. And then you can maybe say, fine, now how do I feel? Maybe you want to journal about it. Maybe you want to think a little bit deeper, do meditation around it or whatever it is. But then you could say, okay, what could I do in future differently? Right. And maybe then you would say, OK, instead of, you know, when I feel stressed, uh, instead of reaching for the cookies, I could call a friend or I could go for a walk or do some deep breathing techniques or, you know, whatever it is. And obviously something that feels good for you, that's easy to do. So you basically you acknowledge it, you embrace it even. So that's the next step. Um, you embrace it. You say instead of feeling guilty and bad about it. Embrace it because it has something good maybe for that as well, right? There is something good about it. You might not know what it is, but you can actually just lovingly embrace it, right? You, you know, you could not be able to breathe and have those cravings. So you can embrace those cravings because that means you're alive, you're alive and kicking, right? You, you have a desire for something or whatever it is. So come from a little different angle. And then as I said, acknowledge, embrace it, and then let it go and find something else that you could do instead in the future. I love that, you know, that three, three step process, right? The acknowledgement, the embracing, and then letting go. And I will say if as someone who has struggled when I was really in the struggle in the thick of it, I didn't do any of that, right? I didn't want to acknowledge it. I mean, I acknowledged it, but instead I didn't embrace it. I didn't let it go. I like harbored on it over and over and over and I think often it's it's can it can be rooted in shame of uh, yeah. the idea of like not necessarily I think guilt has to do with like what I did was bad and it's you separate it from yourself. But I think what happens for us women, because I think we already struggle sometimes with not feeling like enough or we're doing this bad, we like say I'm bad. And then we just like internalize it so much that it's hard to embrace, it's hard to let go, mm. you know. But I really think those pow those three steps are so powerful, so simple, yet can be so hard, you know, because and that's why I think there's the power of working with, you know, coaches, because sometimes you can't see you can't see that that process that's going on in your head, or you just need someone else to like give you compassion and help you yeah. embrace yourself, right? Because I don't know, I just as a mom, I I never I never understood when moms wrestled with like mom guilt. Um, because I wasn't, I didn't understand it. Now as a mom, I'm like, it's so easy. You can feel mom guilt about everything. And then you, you know, then you, you bring that into your food relationship and it just like is amplified even more. And so, um, I just think that's a powerful three-step process. It is. And it's very effective. It takes obviously a little bit, um, you know, practicing, it's probably not going to be easy. Um, if you have, beaten yourself up you know for your right. whole life or so right so take it easy and what I like to do is think 
how you would react uh, if it would be a friend, right? I mean, you would not tell the friend, oh, you're useless. Uh, you know, you again, you ate those cookies. How useless are you, right? You would say, no, it's okay. You know, whatever it is, right, in your own words. So always remember, treat yourself like you would treat your best friend because you are your best friend, right? As right. simple as that. And then once you have that, um, then usually it's a good idea to go a little bit deeper. And in general, I would then recommend to work with either a therapist or a nutrition coach right. or a health coach, somebody, you know, like me, um, who can go a little bit deeper and help you um, with working or somebody like you, you know, who goes a little bit deeper on finding out what is really going on and I do usually, I go with my clients very often to the original event of that limiting belief. Now, I'm jumping a little bit here. Very often we eat or we reward ourselves or we react in a certain way because of a limiting belief or false belief, right? And this limiting or false belief very often stems from our childhood, usually early childhood, actually, um, which very often, and I think as moms, we have, I, I don't know a woman, a woman or a mom who doesn't have some sort of these beliefs, um, unless they've done extensive works. And even then, um, I'm not valuable, I'm not worthy, I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough, whatever it is, you know, whatever the form is. And basically, we are looking at the original event where that limiting or false belief comes from, right? It could be something as simple as, um, you know, as a child, you were sitting, maybe you were at home, your parents came home, they were tired after a long day of work, they put you in front of a TV with a big bag of chips, um, and you were eating those chips, thinking that your parents don't love you because they didn't spend time with you, right? And chips for you represent the love. Mm. So whenever you're craving love, you will hand or get the bag of chips, right? And eat it. Because for you, the false belief is the chips give you the love, right? You develop that. At the time, it was protecting you probably. But today, obviously, it's not the case anymore. So working on these kind of uh, false beliefs is obviously crucial. They can, of course, be, I mean, I gave a very simple sample. I work a lot with uh, women also with trauma in their childhood, even abuse, things like that. And there it goes even a step deeper um, that sometimes the food or, you know, whatever it is protected them. Um, so that is also very important to work on as a next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I love your, you know, I, I talk a lot about food freedom too. And I know obviously you do, you just had an amazing um, fair. And I, I think, I just think that's the point here. Like almost like the mindset, the limiting beliefs, it's like food. It's often we view food, I think we can view it as a friend or a foe. When in re reality, it's fuel for us. It is something to be enjoyed, but there's almost like because of events, because of emotions in our lives, food holds a certain place in our life that may have served us at one point, but if we're really honest, it's not helping us feel like whatever yeah. our overall goal. And so talk to us a little bit about that. Just like, what what have you found with the women you've worked with, like um, their relationship with food? Like, what are they going to it for? Like you say, um, a lot of people um, just look for that fulfillment of that limiting belief in food. Some people do it in alcohol or drugs or game or whatever it is, right? But I mean, we are talking a little bit here about food. So it is somehow the food became uh, the solve me all, right? And it is not, like you just said, Brianna, it's absolutely right. Food is there to nourish us. Yes, of course, pl in a pleasurable way. I mean, we don't need to eat kale if we don't like kale, right? <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it should still be pleasurable. But food is definitely not there to make us feel less stressed, to make us uh, less sad, to make us feel, um, you know, more in control or whatever it is. I mean, that's not the job of food, right? That's so something else, right? What I also find very often is that a lot of people struggle with emotional eating when they are missing a purpose. Mm. 
And that is something huge. Um, and the purpose very often actually goes in the spiritual uh, area. So I don't know if, if you and I guess you know, but the listeners here uh, is there's a wheel of life, right? We have different areas in our lives. And ideally, we want all those. It's like a wheel and we want mm -hmm. all those areas, you know, to be equally filled, right so we want our family life we want our work or our career we want our growth learning our health our spiritual life um, finances you know all these different areas we want kind of to be more or less balanced because otherwise that wheel is not gonna roll smoothly right if it's mm -hmm. not a round wheel it's not gonna get us anywhere so if one of these areas is not kind of filled up um, equally like the others and ideally completely filled well, which is very seldom to see then we're trying to fill that with something like food for example and that's why very often people actually then go into the emotional eating and they try to fulfill that missing purpose. That can be, for example, let's say you're a mom and, you know, your child is at home and now it goes into kindergarten or into school or maybe, you know, the school is finished and they're about to study and maybe even go out into, you know, into another city or into another country. I have that. Um, so my my daughter left when she was 15 years old. Uh, we were living in South Africa. She went to France to finish her high school there, right? Um, so, that you know, there can be various ways or so why we then try to fill something. I also work a lot with very successful women. There are executive people, PhDs, uh, entrepreneurs, whatever it is, right? They're super successful in all the areas except one, right? Because they're almost, it almost feels like, oh, otherwise I'm too successful. I'm too perfect. And they kind of hang on to that little area. And that is often the food. I mean, at least, you know, that's the people I'm working together, um, where they kind of almost try to prove, oh, I'm not uh, perfect. Almost like they need to prove it to themselves or maybe to their families or whatever, because otherwise they would be not approachable. Right. I love that. I mean, I, I mean, I have resonated, I have a resonate with that completely where sometimes it's like you feel alienated because you are able to accomplish a lot of things. So maybe there's one area that you're like, nope, I'm actually not going to do that here. So to show people I'm a hot mess too. Like, you know how moms always say I'm hot mess. I'm like, don't say you're a hot mess. You're like, it's normal to not be perfect. Right. Um, but I love that. I love how you just, you know, that wheel of life. Yes. I, I, I mean, I think that all the things I do, I like do a wheel because there's areas of our life, the things that primarily nourish us is not food. Well, it is food, like that's secondary nourishment, but like our, your relationships, if you like, you're meant to be in relationships with people, you're meant to have a thriving purpose or calling. Like if those things are a little out of line, sometimes we run to other things for that comfort. And sometimes for some of us, that's food, Right. And so, you know, as we wrap up, I mean, you and I could keep talking for hours and hours and hours because I just love this topic. But what would you say, like, for women who are like feeling, okay, maybe I'm sabotaging myself in this area and I want to move to a place that I'm a healthy relationship with food and myself, like, what are a couple things that they could do to really start that process? So I would say, going back to what I said initially, just the awareness, right? Mm -hmm. Um, a really great way to start is um, doing a journal, right, of your day, writing just down and you can do it on a piece of paper, on your cell phone, whatever it is, you know, it doesn't really matter or you can use an app or so. Just write down when you, what you eat and also how you feel. Or you can write down what triggers, let's say you know that you are, you know, handing for the chips or whatever your food is, right? At certain, like too much, right? You know, you are emotionally eating, stress eating. So you could write down, okay, what is the trigger of when you eat, right? So maybe it's each time when your boss calls you or when you get busy, or maybe it's at four o'clock in the afternoon or in the evening when you get home and you're completely exhausted or, you know, whatever it is. But just during one week, just write down, you know, all the things that are going on, your thoughts, your feelings, what you're doing, what you're eating, what you're not eating and so on. And then you can kind of analyze it a little bit and check and you will probably 
discover patterns, right? You will realize, oh, it's every day at four o'clock or it's each time my boss makes me angry or whatever, or maybe my husband gets on my nerves or my child or, you know, whatever it is. And then from there, you're aware, right? So you, you gain an awareness and then you can think, for example, okay, what can I do now? Instead of eating those cookies, could I go for a walk? Could I do some deep breathing? Whatever it is, right? Maybe write a list of all the things that you could do instead and then start implementing. And then maybe after a week, you want to review, did it work? Didn't it work? And so on. And so you can work, uh, you know, through that. Always start with small changes. If ever you do something, let's say you want to start you know, a workout routine. Don't start with one hour of workout routine every day. If you have never worked out, you're going to fail. I mean, quite frankly, most people would. Um, but maybe just five minutes uh, walk around the block is something, right? If you are eating three times at McDonald's every day, don't start to uh, look for, you know, three super healthy uh, gourmet meals that you cook at home, uh, but maybe just um, have as a goal of adding one vegetable to your meals or something like that. So, you know, start really easy and then work your way through that. Ideally, yes, you want accountability, you want some help, right? You want to be able to implement the healthy habits um, that, you know, somebody keeps you accountable, you track them. And then, of course, you can go a little bit deeper and look at the mindset, what I mentioned earlier, find out the root cause of your issues. Is there maybe some trauma and then work on, on that? And then also, of course, also on the physical side, if you have been eating unhealthy, most likely you have imbalanced your hormones. You probably have affected your gut health and compromised maybe some other health uh, systems as well. And you will want to address those as well. And that's what I do with my clients because very often then this removes the heavy lifting, right? Because if you're trying to get rid of emotional eating, but your hormones are completely upside down and your hunger and satiety hormones are completely imbalanced, you will really struggle, but they are so simple tips, actually, that you can then or, and things that you can then do. And obviously, that's something I do with my clients um, to make it easier. It's like, you know, when you try to push this big rock up the mountain, you can make it so much easier. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I just love the, you know, being awareness of the awareness. And I think sometimes we don't want to be aware because it's like it can be scary to be like, you know, face those emotions face what you're feeling, face what you might consider a failure, but to just know you're safe, it's safe to do that. And and that's why I think there's power in like talking with a coach or someone or a therapist, like just, you know, if you need that extra safety space in the beginning, especially don't be afraid to seek it out, you know? Um, But given that, I know you have an amazing workshop that you're offering for free for all of our participants that could help them in this process. So tell us about your food freedom workshop. Great. Um, thank you for letting share that. Um, yeah, the Food Freedom Foundation workshop is actually something I developed. So I've been a bit over seven years in practice now, been working with hundreds and hundreds of clients. And I have actually my Food Freedom Formula, which is this five-step system. I mentioned most of it actually throughout our talk. But um, very often, you know, when we work on all these things, I realize that people struggle just to implement habits. The mindset needs a little bit longer work, right? There's so many facets to it and, you know, it's really 80% of the work, but it needs just in the beginning to be able to implement habits and keep them. I'm asking you and of course, all the listeners here, do you brush your teeth? And I hope everybody will say yes, right? In the morning, in the evening, but I'm asking you as well, are you thinking about it? And probably the answer is no, you just do it, right? Because your mom taught you, to do it because otherwise your teeth will fall out. You probably tell your children the same thing, right? More or less. So you just do it, but nobody really thinks about it. And when you are at that level in terms of having your habits, right? Implementing your habits and keeping them like brushing your teeth, you just do it. You don't need willpower. Even if you are self-sabotaging, you have those habits in place and they are golden, right? And that's why I have put together the Food Freedom Foundation workshop, because that's what I teach you, is how to implement, how to learn a very simple habit that I mentioned already earlier, 
like you know instead of going one hour to the gym just do a five minutes uh, gym or so and being able that you can keep that every day and then build on it instead of doing it one time and then never again or one week and never again right like so many people fall off the wagon and if anybody can like say it's me right how many times did you fall off the wagon the healthy eating wagon the exercise whatever it is right and then in that workshop, I also will tell you how to change your mindset in that way, how to stay on track with it. I will share more details about my food freedom foundation formula. So you know really how to get there to achieve food freedom. Because in the end, if you don't have food control you anymore, right? Um, food is not anymore there to fulfill, sorry, that void in your life. It's just there to what we said earlier, to nourish you then it's what you have food freedom. And then really you can be also a confident mom, right? Most people who come and see me, they want to be more active and feel more confident, right? In their life, with their friends, with their partner, whatever it is. And when food doesn't have that power about over you, then you really have, you know, a confident, good relationship with yourself and obviously with those around you. And mm -hmm. you can be much better mom I I went through that I can tell you I mean it's another conversation but I had a right. big time with my children around that yeah that's so powerful yes so uh moms listening make sure you go ahead and grab that free and generous gift and once you get that you'll be connected with Andrea and can connect, follow her on social and all the places and um yeah I thank you so much for offering that anything else you want to share as we wrap up Thank you for having me here. I want just to share that to everybody out here is you're worth it. So no matter, right, what you were brought to think, you know, we all have our stuff going on in our lives. We had our childhood and I had my fair share of, of uh, thinking I'm not uh, valuable, not worthy. And, you know, it's still a, a journey or so, but just you are worthy, right? You're worthy. You can achieve it. Think as your future self. Maybe one little tip. Think as your future self. How do you want to show up? Or how do you want the person you want to become show up and think as that person? And that's a very, very powerful way of actually showing up there. You can mm -hmm. achieve it. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I need to listen to this over and over again. You said such great gems. But and ladies, you do have access. If you want to get the VIP lifetime recording, I would definitely check that out because I feel like this this is something that we just need to hear on repeat, your voice, your wisdom, and your, your encouragement. So thank you again so much for joining us, Andrea. Thank, thank you, Brianna, and thank you, everybody. Bye.